Today is momentous. Today I did something that I promised myself I would do a long time ago, but I never did, but I did it this week. I created my first ever digital assets pack filled with 60 different grungy textures that people like you, who might be doing work in Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, for whatever program, a Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever, you want to use for your artwork, well, I've got it available. And one of my really good artist friends named Stacey McNevin, she bought it and then turned around and said, hey, I bought your thing. How do I use it? <laughs> She's not really a designer, but she wanted to support me and she also wants to learn how to do it. So I'm going to do that. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm an artist and designer, and I just finished something that helps designers and artists. If you do anything in any kind of digital art platform program, whether you're on Affinity or Adobe or Procreate or Inkscape or GIMP or whatever art program you use, there's a possibility you may have a need for textures, but you may go and buy a pack of textures like you could buy for me, but you don't have to, but you could. You go buy the pack and then you like scratch in your head going, well, okay, well, I've got it now. What do I do with it? Well, today I'm going to help you out and I'm going to create three different images using textures so that you can see how to improve your work or at least, you know, change it to make it look a little bit cooler than it was before. Into the screen. How to use textures in your work. Option number one. Backgrounds. You can see here on the screen is a poster I designed a long time ago, which actually has a texture attached to it. And I put it up in this cool little mock-up with the frame that wasn't actually there, but it was after I did it. Now I can just turn around and put a drop shadow on it. And hey, look, there's a drop shadow. It looks like it's on a wall, but it's a really boring wall. But what if instead you dropped a texture in there just to kind of give it some three dimension, some depth, some interest, something a little bit more, you know, better than just a white wall. I'm going to bring in one of my fancy dancy textures something that's not too crazy but at least has some interest and bring that in there like that drop it right there in the middle like whoa that's a little bit crazy but whatever we're gonna bring it turn it upside down flip it drop it below our art and bam just like that now the color might be wrong you might not want it to be that way you can make some adjustments we can go up here we can change our hue and saturation so it's a little bit more in line with what we got going on you can also reduce the size of the image if we don't want it like it at that size right there you can turn it around you can flip it back and forth do like that or off to the side or whatever suits you you can even invert the image completely doing a command i or go up to uh where is it uh layer invert is somewhere here i don't know just hit command i now you notice that when i did that it actually cropped the entire image to the thing so now i'm stuck with that but i can go back and change that back to that what it is and there you go super simple option number two textures as masks let's say you've got a really interesting image that you feel like it need to you need know, to bump it up a little bit more you need to turn up the notch a little bit make it a little bit more grungy a little bit more gritty or maybe just to add some interesting texture of any sort to it you go and you take your image like this you drop in and one of your textures wherever you get your textures from preferably for me this one actually originally looked like this it's like an oil patch that i found outside on a on somebody's you know front yard somewhere in their sidewalk but i kind of like it this tone because if you know anything thing about masking you know that white reveals and black conceals and although we're not really looking total black and white here I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to take a hue and saturation level drop my saturation all the way down merge that down because I don't really care about this the destructive layer here I'm also going to add a little bit of a levels because I don't want too much gray there's a little too much gray going on here so I'm gonna bring my whites in a little bit bring my blacks in a little bit now I don't want complete total threshold but I do want to back up on those grays just a bit and I do want those blacks to really kind of push through because that's going to be where the magic happens folks and then I'm going to merge that one down on that layer I'm going to right click and I'm going to rasterize to mask and that just makes it kind of a, a rasterized mask on top of everything that's here if we go in here and I just pull a random image let's say of that right there because it's nice and vibrant and opposite colors of what we've got going on here bring that layer below my main layer and you can see that the mask has applied itself to everything so everything below that rasterized mask layer is going to be masked out but that's not exactly what I want so what I want to do this time is on that mask layer I'm going to mask to below and so now what you see is everything that's happening behind there 
is now popping through. Now, is this the best example? I don't know. Pro no, <laughs> no, it's not. And in fact, if I wanted to, this is where <laughs> affinity tends to, you know, make me look like a fool. But I'm gonna change my brush here. I'm gonna go to sprays. Uh, we'll go to that one right there. Brush tool. We want to conceal, not reveal. I had that opposite. Black reveals what's going on underneath and white conceals what's happening. And so now I've got this. I'm just kind of painting on my mask layer. I'm painting in white with the random brush. So there you go, that's that's pretty much it. Now that's one way to lay a texture on top of something. You could also do it another way. I'm backing up to this point here and what I'm going to do now instead is I'm just gonna put a blending mode on this. And this, you can do this a bunch of different, you can see obviously just my scrolling really quickly through it, there's some pretty interesting stuff happening. But as you move your way through this, you can make some decisions about what you want to do. Now overlay is a pretty good one, but it obviously, it's creating quite a bit of contrast there. Maybe soft light, maybe hard light. You, again, you can always invert the image too. If I go Command I on my image, I can invert the colors and it creates a whole different opportunity for things. You can go in there and you can just do this if you wanted to just add some interesting kind of overlay texture rather than a texture mask. And then you can always, on your blending mode, you can just lower your opacity down if you just want a little bit of a grit. Just a little bit of a grit on top of that. Option number three, distressed gradient maps. Full disclosure, I don't do this one a lot, but I have experimented with them a little bit recently, so I wanted to share this experimentation with you. Plain old image of a really, uh, you know, attractive young lady looking all kind of like pensive and whatever that look is she's got in her face, standing underneath a lot of bright lights, probably, what, a carnival or something? Maybe she's at an amusement park? I don't know. But I want to change the coloration of this, and I could just turn around and add a gradient map on top of that. If you've never done that, you go into the effects here. You go to your adjustment layers and then gradient map. And then that looks weird. So I'm gonna delete that middle one there. Now here's the thing about gradient maps. Different than gradients themselves, they are mapping themselves to the tones on the page. And so anything over here on the right is mapping itself to the, the highlights. And then everything over here on the left is mapping itself to the shadows. If I just reverse that, you can kind of see what's going on here. That blue's a little bit too neon for me. I mean, it could work, but I'm gonna bring it down in, in uh, saturation just a tad. And I'm actually gonna bring this one down in saturation also. You know what? I need the wheel. Where's the wheel? I'm gonna go this way with it. So that, is a gradient map overlay on top of this image. And you know, it looks okay. But if I wanna make this super interesting, I drop in an interesting texture, put it right there on top, maybe readjust it. Let's see, I'm gonna bring the, I'm gonna bring the opacity down just so I can see how this relates to her. Yeah, I think I'm gonna flip this. It looks kinda of cool, maybe let's, let's invert it. Maybe that's, maybe that's even better. So I inverted it and of course it rasterized it, so it trimmed it up. I'm just gonna go ahead and group those and then rasterize those two together. And then I'm gonna start my overlay, maybe Vivid Light, Color Dodge. You can do some pretty crazy stuff. This is not much different. I'm basically combining the two, uh, the, the, a little bit of what I did last time with that gradient map. But then maybe that's not quite enough for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, hit, I'm gonna Command J and duplicate that layer. I'm gonna bring it up on top. I'm actually going to add a hue and saturation to that. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a curves. Sometimes I prefer to do curves versus threshold because I have a little bit more control. Threshold can be a bit intense when it comes to this stuff. So, but I do wanna add some hard uh, contrast there, but not too much, I still want my gray there. I'm just gonna group all those. And then I'm gonna set that to an overlay. And maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. Well, that's kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. You know, so I'm just playing. I'm playing around. I mean, I think that's really part of the thing is like finding different things to play around, try different textures. Maybe that other texture isn't what it is. Maybe we need to bring in a new texture. Let's find something a little bit more, uh, not so intense as that last one. Again, gradient map on top of that one. Reverse those two out. And we'll just leave them as is. I'm 
going to rasterize those two together. You know, so you just never know. You just never know. And maybe, they, again, maybe these work. Maybe they don't. Maybe if I, what if I inverse it? Like, that's kind of cool. Command I, I just pulled that up. And if I drop that in, oh, let's do this. Let's uh, really kind of bring that saturation in there. It might be a little bit much, so bring that down. I mean, that's kind of cool. Drop some type in there. One thing I want to note is that I made this all in Affinity Photo, and you may not have Affinity Photo. You may actually have Adobe Photoshop. And although the processes are a little different, the core ideas are essentially the same. Masks are basically the same, overlays are basically the same, gradient maps are basically the same. It's really more about what kind of creativity and ideas that you can apply to these textures rather than how they get applied in any one particular uh, program. I have done numerous experimentations both in Infinity Photo and Adobe Photoshop over my lifetime and really what it comes down to is getting in there and messing around and finding new things and figuring things out and making mistakes that turn into happy mistakes. That happens to me all the time. In fact, if you look at this image right here that I've got on the screen, this was made basically by a happy accident. And when I started to really push it, I found something super interesting. It has this very kind of street art aspect to it where it's like spray paint on a wall. It's got masking, it's got backgrounds, it's also got displacement maps and posterization which is something I haven't talked about yet and I'm making a video about that which is only gonna be available for people who join my Patreon. Yes! That's right folks, I haven't pushed this very much. I have talked about it a little bit, but I do have a Patreon. If you join today at the boss level, not only would you get the stained texture pack in its completion, the whole thing, you're gonna get it all. You're gonna get all 60 textures. You're also gonna get the exclusive video that's only gonna be available for people at that level. You're also gonna get the Affinity Photo file for that tutorial, as well as the three that we talked about today. And if you stick around, I'll be dropping a new texture pack or a new asset to people on that boss level. Plus you'll get all the freebies, all the source files, all the exclusive videos, and you get top tier discounts on anything I put out in the future, and that is indefinite. Well, as long as I remember to keep updating the the, the discount code. And if you need a little bit more convincing, just so you understand exactly what I've got planned in the future, I've got a brush pack that I'm working on right now. I've got another texture pack in the works right now that's all distressed and distorted text. I'm also trying to put together a bunch of paper textures that are more unique than what I've seen from other people. I'm building some assets and some styles that you can use in any one of the Affinity products. And as time goes on and Affinity keeps adding functionality to their programs, which I fully anticipate we're gonna see a big boom of stuff come Affinity 2.0. As they keep doing that, I'm gonna keep experimenting and I'm gonna keep sharing new cool things with you. If you join Patreon, you're gonna be getting to the front of the line for all of that stuff in the future and I'm really looking forward to it. I had a blast making this particular texture pack and I cannot wait to make more. I'm really looking forward to it. Stay tuned, join Patreon or don't, totally okay. If you just wanna get your hands on the textures, they're available in the shop. Just go down to the link in the description. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna get out, but I wanted to make sure if you have any questions, make sure you go down in the comments ask away. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that bell button because you never want to miss a thing. And I'm out. Folks, be good today. Be even better tomorrow. See ya.